Hi there, it's Roy from Sulphur City Sabres. What we have on the bench at the moment is our Lyson Strike model. So this is a brief overview of the design itself. It's not an operation care or maintenance video. Uh, for such a video, please check the links in the rest of the product section. This is simply discussing the design itself and giving a Sabre overview. Okay, I love this one. <laughs> this is a um, the second hilt in our range, so that would consider one of our more compact models, the other one being the covert arm. Um, the license strike is a similar length, but is uh, slightly differently modelled. <clears throat> so uses for this one, um, it's quite a short hilt, being a compact hilt. So if you're using it for choreography or dueling, um, I would suggest this is more suited for the one-handed Makashi practitioners. Uh, you can get two hands on the saber. I have quite large hands, so if you've got smaller hands, you'll have an easy job. And wield it with two hands. However, you might find if you're a two-handed saber wielder, some of our other designs are maybe two or three centimeters longer, and that makes all the difference when you're looking between a single and dual handed wield. Um, maybe more suitable. But if you are, like I said, a one handed fencer style Makashi practitioner, this is actually a great little hilt. Let's break it down. It breaks down into three parts. <clears throat> and the good thing about it being a uh, for Makashi practitioners, it's got quite a chunky pommel on it, which adds a little bit of weight to the back end, which just aids with that one-handed wield. So with the parts removed, that is the main body section. So whereas a lot of the other, body, other designs have quite a short switch section, and you can see most of the chassis, this one is a, a longer single so what you can't see under here is the Xeno 3 um, bracelet core running the Xeno 3 board. So it comes pre-configured with a plethora of um, fonts and presets which will keep um, even the more than average Sabre enthusiast quite happy scrolling those. Got a good selection on there. Again, what you can't see on there is a SD card slot, uh, which is empty, but it does allow you to optionally pop in an SD card with some additional sound fonts and maybe pop in some configuration tweaks as well in the form of a config file or a config tweaking file. So yeah, a very nice model, this one. And I was talking about its suitability for one-handed Makashi. Uh, you notice it's got a flared emitter as well. Now you wouldn't think it, but a uh, slight flare on the emitter, like so, acts like a little suba. Uh, a suba is a piece on the sword, it's like a flat plate that stops the blade coming down and hitting the hands. Because it's quite a wide design there, that um, does a similar thing. So if you're holding the saber like that and the blade is sliding down, if you're dueling, the opponent's blade is sliding down your blade, that suba will stop your fingers getting doinked on a or minimize the risk <coughs> on a regular basis. So a really handy little little cool feature. So weighted pommel and the flared emitter is what we immediately identified as being quite attractive to the one-handed practitioners. Right. So let's look at the rest. We've got the recharge port and switch assembly here. And at the time, we have this really nice switch design, illuminated by a white LED backlight when the save is running. On the back, we have a couple of screws. So we have the chassis retention screw, keeps the chassis in place. And then we have this little grub screw here, which pushes the switch and recharge port assembly into the recesses on. The Sabre, we have three retention holes for the blades, one, two, three. Now, if you've got a heavy grade blade in the Sabre, 
you only need to use the one retention screw, which is this one here, because heavy grade blades are quite thick, so they're very stiff. If you have a mid-grade blade, which have thicker blade walls, and are a little bit more squirmy, a little bit more flexy when you put the retention screw in, having three retention screws helps lock in that blade. And if you're a Makashi practitioner, you're probably going to be using a mid-grade blade in here. Anyway, albeit all of our sabers do ship with heavy grade blades as standard, just to let you know that there is that option for putting a mid-grade in there with the three retention screws. And of course, that just makes it a little bit easier to handle for single-handed use. So install options. The saber comes with the Xeno 3 RGB bracelet, great for the jewelers. The Xeno 3 Pixel, which is not rated, the blades aren't rated for jeweling. Um, nor should any Pixel blade be rated for jeweling. If you want something a bit more flashy with the blade effects. And then, of course, we have our Profi cores as well, which you can fit. Of note, most of our sabers have um, are compatible in terms of cores. So if you had a couple of sabers, for example, one Profi and one RGB bracelet, in theory, you could actually just swap the cores between them. Okay, so that is the overview of our Lysum Strike. Um, a very nice model, this one. Again, it's quite clean. Um, just really, really nicely designed. It's uh, going to be quite a popular model, I think. Um, and I said for handling, that's a really nice saber to handle, especially for the one-handers. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to pop them through. Thanks for your time.